Hello and welcome to another Scottish mountain walking guide. In this video I'll explain the route taken while showing a 3D flyover for the route. This is followed by the full walk time lapse with video and commentary from along the way. For today's walk I'm climbing Craig Vaughan and Ben Hiskarnich. These two morones can be walked in a large circular route covering 25 kilometres. It's also possible to cycle to the far end of the glen and walk the two morones in a shorter circuit covering 14 kilometres. The walk didn't go quite to plan, as part of the route I was intending to take it was based on my first Monroe guidebook from 26 years ago and as it turned out there was a large deer fence blocking my way, which led to a slight detour. The total distance is 25 kilometres with 1400 metres of ascent. In summer conditions it's expected to take around 8 hours and 40 minutes to walk. Parking is at the end of a twisty, bumpy, single track road in Glen Lochie. There are a few unsigned passing places and it's around 6 miles from Cullin. Parking is free, there are no height restrictions, you can probably fit around 8 cars and it fills up early. It's 1 hour and 40 minutes from Glasgow and a little over 2 hours drive from Edinburgh. Here we have an overview of the actual route that I took and I cycled the first part of the walk to this point here. I'm just going to show briefly the route that is recommended by Walk Highlands a large circular route and if you went this way there's not much opportunity to decrease the walking distance by cycling. I've also read reports that this section of the walk is extremely boggy and wet. I've completed these two Monroes before and even on my first walk I came back down more directly down to here. As I mentioned, my intended route was to come down the side of this river here and that was the route that was from my first Monroe book but there's a large deer fence that cuts across here and I could see no way to get down there so I had to go down to the end to join the fence and then walk to this side of the fence where there's a gate to get through. If I was to do the walk again I would recommend leaving the bike slightly further along the road and coming off the mountain and a more direct route back down to that point instead of where I left the bike over here. So starting from the car park, you continue down the road, either on foot or on bike, heading in the west direction. You just keep to the side of the river bank, go straight through here. There's a cattle grid and gate to go through here and just follow the road. It's rather straightforward. Once you pass this large clump of trees, you're then watching out for the next bridge. And there's a, a bridge here over this river. It's at that point that I left the bike behind. You'll also see a little cottage here. And that's called Badur, that cottage, and there's some trees. From there, continue to walk along the road. Crosses another bridge. So you just ignore this little road that's going up for these barns. Follow the road and you'll come to a junction. At this junction you want to go straight ahead, so keep it to the right hand side. And now the road will start to zigzag as it gains some altitude. And then you'll join this other road, there's a secondary road that runs parallel. And if you're walking you can take either road to come along to this point. There's a little holiday let just parked right here, so you'll see that. And you can see that from quite a distance away. Once you come up to this road, turn to your left and it's about 500 metres long and you're going to come to a gate it wasn't clear on the map, it doesn't show the gate and there's, you can see a stile as you're walking along and you want to cross over that stile but to get to the stile you actually go through the gate and then walk up the side of the fence and start heading north you'll go over the stile and you're going to make your way up through the crags on the day I did the walk it was a bit difficult to spot where the path was due to the snow but you just make your way up, continuing in a sort of north westerly direction None of this is too difficult, there is a rocky quarry section that you go up through and it gets a little bit steeper but there's, it's not too bad, not too exposed. You'll make your way up, fall on the path and then you'll come up to the first top at this point. From here navigation is extremely easy, there's a clear path and it really goes along the top of the ridge. You're keeping to the highest centre point of that ridge all the way up and you just keep climbing up and keep climbing in a northwesterly direction until you get to the summit. On the day I did the walk the summit was clear and there was incredible views in all directions. From the summit you want to go north and then northwest. Just to avoid these crags in this steep section here and once you come round here you just curve round to the north then to the northeast. It's a very gentle decline, it's not steep and it's not exposed. You just got to miss this section right here. And as you carve round here, you'll go down the side of a stream and follow the path. I think the path actually was on the opposite side of the stream, as long as you're going down with that stream. 
you'll cross over. It gets a little bit boggy and wetter here, but it's not bad at all. Looks worse than it actually is. And then you'll come up to the ridge here. The start of the path is quite vague, but you're aiming for, you'll see a little cluster of rocks. Looks a little bit craggy and you actually go up through the middle of that. And once you get to that point, the path is very clear. The path actually zigzags up this face a lot more than what I'm showing here. You, it's a clear path that you can follow and you make your way up until you get to the first top. You follow this path as it undulates. There's a little bit of up and down through these different, this rough terrain here. And then you're going to bend round and head more in a northerly direction. These crags that are shown here, there's nothing big. There's, you can walk along below them or walk along above them, but they're not large. And you just follow that as it curves and then heads directly north. A little bit of up and down and a couple of false summits. And then eventually you'll get to quite a large flat top with a, a reasonable size cairn. Again, incredible views from this point as well. Now, if you were wanting to follow the Walk Highlands route, you would now sort of drop down and head in an easterly direction across this area here. I have never done it that way. I've always went straight back down to the road. You're going to head south, retrace your steps back. I had actually intended to drop off about here and I wasn't paying attention and I was just enjoying walking on a nice path and then I realised I overshot where I was going to turn off so then I turned down. Now you have to make your way down here quite carefully. There was a lot of snow and there are some steeper sections so just making sure to avoid the, the craggiest parts. With the snow this was a really easy walk all the way down here. Yeah, well, it was a nice easy walk down to that point. Cross over here. Got a little bit steeper here and you just have to take care. It's not, if you slipped you weren't going to fall anywhere. Not significantly. It wasn't like there was a big drop. But it was fairly steep. You just didn't want to slip. Make your way down. If I was doing this bit again I would keep closer to this stream and curve around here. I was aiming to go sort of straight down towards the cottage but there are a number of deer fences that block that and so this is me joining the deer fence here and having to walk around the deer fence and come down to the road. My original route was to go down, cross over the stream here and go down the opposite side but there was a large deer fence and I could see no way of getting across the deer fence so I chose to go down because you could walk down here and there was signs of a path and make my way down here. It wasn't the best path and then I came to another deer fence so I had to walk across to the west to a gate. I go through the gate and then make my way back down to where the bike was. From the bike you're back on the gravel road and then you're just heading east along the gravel road all the way back out to the car park. It's 7.30 in the morning. I'm at the Glen Lochy car park. Parked here once before for a couple of Munro's that did up on the left. Today I'm going to cycle. I'm going to cycle down the Glen to the start of the walking park. Total distance is around 25 kilometers. With the cycle, it reduces the walk down to 14 kilometers. From here, going to head west. Cycle is about five kilometers to where I leave the bike. Then we have a choice to go either anti-clockwise or clockwise. And I'll probably go in a clockwise direction. That means going up the steep edge of that ridge ahead there. Going up into the mountains and then back down. It's a beautiful day. The best of the weather is meant to be around about one o'clock cloud on the tops up until about 10 o'clock. He's going by the forecast. That looks like the ridge line up to Craig Vore directly ahead with the summit just in view. Might be a bit more difficult to make out in the video. Just under the grey cloud, right in the centre of the frame. So we're going to go up that ridge line and go round the back.
Not much further before I leave the bike. With that group of trees is about the same distance, a little bit less. Further beyond those trees, there's a bridge and then a little track that goes up to a barn on the right hand side. So just at that bridge, it's a place called Badur. And that's where I'm going to leave the bike. Follow the road on foot a little bit further and then zigzag up the front of that big shiny white bit of mountain. And then go round up onto the second top and then back down to Badur. Ben Calum ahead. You can click the pop out banner in the top right hand corner to see the video for that one. There's a little bit more snow on that day. And the ridge up to Craig Vaughar, all nicely lit up for us. So I've just crossed the bridge. This is where I'm leaving the bike. You continue to follow the road to the west and then it's the road itself splits and bends up. I can see it directly ahead. Goes up, there's a second road that runs the whole way along this glen in parallel to this road further up the hillside. And if you're walking without the bike, I would just use that road. But I don't really like cycling uphill, so I prefer to walk uphill. The descent is pretty much going to come straight down there. The cycle has taken about half an hour. It's just after eight o'clock now. You'll see this barn on your right hand side. We go on a little bit further before the, the road forks and we go up to the right. So we're just approaching where the road splits. You want to go up to the right hand side and looking ahead at the mountain, it does look quite steep. And I checked the map and the path it goes up until it joins the road that's further up the hill. Then you go a bit to the left and then the path zigzags up to the right and then back to the left. Pretty much right up the middle of the face. I hope the path's quite clear to follow because it does look quite steep and craggy. I've done this once before and I don't recall any difficulties going up here, but it was a long time ago. This is a point where the road joins the other road that runs along the valley in parallel. Turn to your left, follow that road, it's around about 500 metres before we turn and go up onto the mountain. Well, at least I know I'm on the right track. You can see the stile there that's going over the fence. So that's where we're heading. Still another 150 metres or so along this road. I expect there'll be a little cairn and with there being a stile there should be clear signs of where at the edge of the road where we turn up to the right. So according to the map and the route that I plotted, the path goes up to that stile from where that rusty pipe is, about 15 metres away. But there's no cairn and no sign of wear, not really, very little, very little wear. 
So I thought I'd come up to the gate and see if it started here and you can see a clear path has been made on the other side of that fence. So I'm going to follow the path from here. So go through the gate and then go up the path. And then see where it goes. Should be more clear from here. So that path leads you directly to that stile. There's a big gap in the fence here. Looks like they're planning to put a gate in. So I think most people have been going in the opposite direction to me, have just went straight down there onto the road. So there's no real clear path. So I just go up and cross the stile it's very difficult to tell where the path goes looking at the map. I'm not sure. It actually looks like it goes right over the crags up there, but it might go up in the middle. It might just go round to the right. Hoping that once they get up into this, there'll be a clearer path to follow. So when you come to this little stream, just head straight up for a bit. I'm just going to keep going straight up and then it'll bend round to the right. I'm not exactly sure at what point I'll go around to the right. It looks easy to get to the top there that you can see in the horizon. So I'll just head straight up there just now. According to the GPS, I'm not exactly on the route, but I'm not far off. I'm going to go straight ahead up here. There seems to be a line of weakness through these crags directly ahead. So I'll take myself up onto the ridge again. Up onto the horizon. Just that bit there. I'm going to aim to go up that bit. Now you see where the snow has melted. This looks like a path. So hopefully on the right track. Just looking back down the glen towards Cullin. Ben Louie in the distance over there. A lovely day to be climbing over there. There's a little breeze. It's actually less windy up here. I think the wind's coming from the north, heading south. So once we get up onto the ridge proper, it'll probably be a bit windier, about 15 miles per hour today. I've just been making my way up through the rocks here. I think the path goes slightly to the right, but this has been easy enough to step up, so I'm just going to keep going up here. At 650 metres, there's a little first top and it flattens off at 826 metres. So less than 200 metres will be onto the ridge proper. Goes along nice and level for a little bit and then there's a steep section to the summit. Just a way up there. That should be a really nice part of the walk. like Ben Moore just sticking out over the top. So that is quite a steep section. Again, it's not exposed. Lots of steps, lots of boulders to just work your way up through. And back on the path proper.
can see the path again. It just goes around this little bit of mine. So I'll join the path. The summit of Craig Var looks like it's a very light cloud. It might just be clear at the moment. Glorious viewpoint this. So you can see Ben Louie and Ben Moore. Stub Binion behind it. The time is 10 o'clock. See the summit of Craig Farr there. There is a route that comes directly down the right hand ridge, but it looks a bit steep and with snow in it, I'm not going to chance that. The safer alternative is to continue heading northwest. It's actually more west than northwest, but continue heading that direction down the less steep section. And then once you come down, you curve round to the right down to that big broad bealach there between the two Monroes and then you've got all of that ascent to go back up and the summit's just at the back there doesn't really look the highest point but because it's further away so a fair bit to go The summit is about 800 metres away and about 160 metres of altitude to climb. From here to the top you want to just keep right to the middle of the ridge. There's no shortcuts round the side, straight up the middle. Glorious day. The northeastern face has got some big cliffs, big drops there. A little bit of weather coming in, but this should blow through in the next couple of hours. So I'm going to return to the centre of this ridge and just keep making my way up. Summit of Craig for Oh, it's so good to get a view. It's been a good few weeks. So that's where we're heading next. And like I said, I'm going to go down to the northwest and then curve round. That whole ridge looks a lot easier from this angle. It's quite broad. Again, nothing too exposed along that ridge line. 
I've just come over to the southern edge of the summit. Ben Moore and Stob Binion are over there with the, just the summits in the cloud. Ben Louie next to it. There's a little bit of weather coming in from the north. So there's a the summit cairn of Craig Farr and Ben Hishgarnich is in the distance, currently in some light cloud. At the moment, the best of the weather is to the south. So the summit's back there, the wind's picking up a little bit. Continue to follow the path in a northwest direction for a little bit. And then it's going to head north for a little bit and then back to the northwest as you make your way down this northwest side of the mountain. It's kind of straight ahead until we get to the edge and then we want to turn left. Just keep away from any steep drops. So I've just come along the top of the steep section there which is off that edge and I've found the path and I'm going to just continue straight ahead, start keeping to the left. You could cut it and go straight down but it's a bit slippy. On that long gradual descent just follow the ridge down there. And you'll get to a point and it'll turn around to the right to take you right down to the Bila. Should be straightforward from here. So coming down that way I've avoided a steep section. From here. I just want to get down straight ahead. I'm going to stay a little bit to the left still and curve round. It's just whatever seems most sensible, not too steep. It's a wee bit icy underfoot. There's more wind at this side and it's the northern side, or the northeastern side, but it's a bit colder than the ascent. It's a little bit more ice. Patches of snow back there were too frozen to to cross safely without crampons or snow chains. But yeah, I'm just heading, I can see a path straight ahead, so I'm gonna head down towards that, then bend round to the right and just make my way down to the end of that ridge down there. So I've come down there was a bit of a path there. There's signs of a path going that way, but at this point I want to turn right and really just head straight down to the lowest point, the Bielach, between here and that ridge over there. It's not been too difficult coming down there, just a nice stroll. Keep going down with the little stream there on your right hand side and then it, I can see signs of a path right through the middle and then head for the other side. Those rocks there in the middle I think I want to go up to the right hand side of that and then it's pretty much up the middle and all the way up. Yeah, 
it looks like the path goes right up the middle of the crags there. We'll get up there and have a look. I think it just goes between them, straight up the centre. There's only a slight breeze at the moment and the sun is absolutely baking. A glorious day. This path is really good. Once you get up to that craggy bit that I pointed out at the beginning, after that you can follow the path quite easily. And it zigs and zags quite wide across the face of this ridge, which makes it a bit easier to go up. It is quite steep. I'm currently at 850 metres. This path, fairly steep section here, goes up about another 100 metres to 950 metres and then it kind of levels off. The gradient eases up, let's put it that way. Still a wee bit to go to get to the summit. Currently around 978 metres in altitude. And a little bit below the summit over there, which is around 1,078 metres. Crags that are marked on the map, they're not significant. So I'm just going to go straight ahead here. You can see the summit over there on the left. Not too far to go and just a nice gentle walk from here. At the summit of Ben Hiskarnich. It's a little bit windier now. Yeah, the sun's coming and going. That's quite a trek from Craig Vor to here. Big descent, quite a long distance. Just looking north, that's Loch Lion down there. So there's a couple of Munros over there, quite easy ones. A 
That looks like Ben Doran over there. Definitely one of my favourites. It's 1.30. That's six hours since leaving the car park. So from the summit I want to retrace my steps, heading almost directly south, very slightly east of south, but along the ridge. Just looking back, I've actually overshot where I should have turned off down to the left. That high spot that's in the sort of in the shade, I should have been turning down to the left. Instead, I just mindlessly followed the path, which actually bent to the right at that point. So, having realised I've done that, I'm going to turn, do a 90 degree turn to the left, and just go down here. Just make my way down. It's fairly steep, but. There's some bits of crags, but nothing too difficult. I want to make my way down until I get to the edge where you can see that house that I want to aim for. So I'm going this way for a wee bit. You can see the large group of trees. I pointed that out earlier. That's to the left of where the house is. So the house is about straight ahead there. I just don't want to go down anything too steep. This snowbank actually looks quite favourable. The snows, it's not as hard and icy on this side of the mountain because of the sunshine. So I think I can easily walk down that big bank of snow, get down there a bit and then just go straight across until I get to the edge. And then from there I'll just see how steep it is. I know I can go down the right hand side, it's not steep at all. So far the snow has been perfect, it's got a nice crunchy, soft, spongy feel that you get a good grip in it, just walking down your heels, little snowballs going down, it's getting a little bit steeper, but there's not even a drop to go over if you did slip, it's lovely and calm now. Well that was a surprise, really nice gentle walk down, snow was good, a couple of sections you could feel the ice like a few inches underneath the surface, so I just sort of avoided them as best I could. If you're a snowboarder you could easily have snowboarded all the way down there to here. Ah, lovely, see how calm it is. So I'm heading to the edge there, just ahead. And from there I'll look and see which bit looks to be the least steep. Probably zigzag a little bit on the, the descent. So I've just come to that edge I pointed out. Still a long way to get to the next edge. So the next edge is where I'll actually be able to see that little house. Looking here, looks a bit easier to go down to the left there. And then come down. I'll look at the right as well, just to see. Just looking back up. So I'm actually, I'm going to go down to the right here. Go down to that bit of snow, cross over and follow that down. On the map it doesn't look too steep. And the little house is more to the right hand side than the left hand side over there. So I had to look down on that left hand side and I couldn't see a clear way and I didn't want to keep going down there because I could see that on this right hand side it curves round and goes straight down. There's no challenges to get down that side. The only bit to be careful of is crossing the river or stream that's in that little gully there. 
So I was just checking the snow with my poles before stepping on it. But it was solid, so I'm over on this side. Just going to curve down here to the left. I've verified my position on the map and where the bike is. I want to be going ahead, directly ahead. So there's a rock there in the grass. That's where I'm aiming for just now. Go around the right hand side of that little pond. And then from there, I should be going straight ahead down back to the bike. I can now see where the bike is parked, that little house, the tree and the bridge. One thing that's going to determine where I walk is the deer fence. I can see it ahead. You can see it there, it looks like it goes along and then goes down the way, so I might have to walk round that. Unless I spot a stile whilst I'm on my way down. I was looking to see if you could get through that fence just there, it looked like there might have been a gap, but it's not. So I'm going to head down to the left hand side of the fence and just walk around the fence down to the left and then straight down to the bridge, back to the bike. I think I need to go through this gate, cross over the fence, not the big fence, keep to the right hand side of that tall fence and there's a path you can see going down there, follow that path down by the side of the house. So this is a bit of a pain. There's no way through this fence. You could climb over it, but it's a bit high, you might damage it. Looks like a stile or a gate further along there. Looks like that's where I've got to go. Fortunately, the gate is not locked, so I can get through here, back down to the road, and along to the bike. The time is 3.20. I'm back down beside the bike. Yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend that route. I'll have already explained the normal route if you're walking. You can even do that cycling as well. Bit challenging coming down there and the deer fence. I don't think that was there the last time I did it. From here, head east along the road. Five kilometers. Should take about half an hour for me to cycle.
that's me back at the car park. The time is 3.50. Hope you enjoyed the video. Got sore feet. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to showing you more in the next one. Bye for now.